Welcome back to the FPL video on podcast. I'll be covering all 20 Premier League teams today with the predicted lineups and discussing the main set piece takers for penalties, corner kicks and free kicks. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. A few things, of course, might change over the next couple of days and new signings are happening every single moment, it seems. Chelsea have just signed Pedro Neto, for example, and Dominic Solanke has moved to Tottenham Hotspur. And I'll be covering if these certain players, as well as many others, will be starting in game week one, which is the main focus. But I'll discuss several changes we could see over the next couple of weeks as we delve deeper into the new Premier League season. Smash the like button and subscribe for new if you enjoy my content. Let's try to get this video to the 300 likes and let's keep on pushing towards new goals like 35 subscribers. Check out all the other links in the description below as well and keep your eyes peeled for the team selection and rating your team's videos. There could be a couple there, maybe even a live stream. If you want to see it, once again, leave it down in the comment section below and talk to me on Twitter, Instagram and the Discord server. Those links are provided in the description. On screen, you can see Draft Town, which is a great resource I've been using over the past year. And there are many different features, such as predicted lineups, player rankings, player comparisons, and many other tools, such as the fixture difficulty rating, which you can toggle by attack, defense, and chances of winning a game as well over the next five game weeks if you choose. There are so many different ways you can use this website, so be sure to check it out as well. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Let's kick things off with the Gunners, and there are several surprises in here. Mainly Sinchenko at left back, Thomas Partey at the heart of the midfield, and Leandro Trossard on the left wing. And a few things could change. Arsenal might go for a very offensive lineup and go for Kai Havertz in the midfield with Declan Rice as the lone six, and then Gabriel Jesus up front because he's been very sharp in pre season. But I'm actually quite confident Sinchenko will start at left back. He's been very impressive in the last two games against Bayer Leverkusen, where he scored and he was heavily involved in the build up there. And he also played very well against Lyon in a 2 0 victory for the Gunners in the Emirates Cup final. As for Trossard or Martinelli, there are some doubts about that one. Martinelli looked very sharp against Manchester United, but Trossard has got more minutes in pre-season. So really the main position I'm least sure about is Thomas Partey because we could see Jorginho there, or as I just mentioned, Declan Rice as the six, and then Kai Havertz as one of the midfielders to facilitate Gabriel Jesus up front. Let's talk about the certainties. David Raya will be in goal with Ben White, Saliba and Gabriel being the three most nailed on defenders and the two centre-backs scored against Lyon in that 2-0 victory and both goals were assisted by Declan Rice from the corner kick. Expect him to take a lot of set pieces this season. We've seen that throughout this calendar year and he's bolstered those assist numbers as a result. Martin Odegaard will start week in, week out. The same goes for Bakayo Saka and then we've got Kai Havertz up front and Leandro Trossard on the left. But I think as the season gradually progresses, we're going to see a lot of rotation on the left-hand side, particularly at left-back. I don't think Sinchenko will be the main left-back for most of this season, but in certain games, he can unlock defences with those passes between the lines. And as for Timber and Calafuri, they offer more defensive solidity on that left flank. As for Trossard, the main competitor, of course, will be Gabriel Martinelli, and the Belgian can play up front from time to time. And Arsenal, of course, have Gabriel Jesus and Kai Havertz, who can play there as well. I think several players like Eddie Nketiah will be moved on. He's heavily linked with a move to Marseille on loan. But let's talk about the set-piece takers. For penalties, Saka is first, Odegaard second, and Kai Havertz third. We could see penalty due is shared quite a lot. And last season, we saw a trend where Saka took most penalties at home, whilst away from home, it was Martin Odegaard. So we could see a similar trend this season. As for direct free kicks, it'll be Odegaard and Declan Rice. And then corners and indirect free kicks, I think Saka, Rice and Odegaard in that order. But we could see Declan Rice become the number one corner kick taker. We've seen him take a lot in this calendar year as well. As for pre-season, Arsenal have looked quite good overall. The only defeat coming against Liverpool in a 2-1 loss. They beat Bournemouth on penalties after a 1-1 draw. They beat Man United 2-1 and beat Bayer Leverkusen 4-1 in their best performance. Sinchenko, Trossard, Jesus and Havertz all scored and Havertz also got two assists on that day. As for the 2-0 win over Lyon, that was the most recent game where Arsenal scored two goals from set pieces. And apart from that, their overall performance wasn't great offensively. They did miss some chances, but they controlled the tempo and they looked ready for game week one. 
Aston Villa have lost four out of the last five games in pre-season and sometimes these friendlies can give you an insight into what's to come in the upcoming Premier League campaign but we can't look too much into it of course Aston Villa have made some great signings on paper and they still should be quite strong and competitive going into the new campaign. Emi Martinez will be in goal and he got his first start in a 2-0 loss against Borussia Dortmund since winning the Copa America with Argentina. I would expect Matty Cash to start the season at right back but once Tyrone Mings returns from that ACL injury he suffered against Newcastle in gimmick one last season I think Consul will be shifted to right back and then you will see Mings and Pau Torres as the main centre-back partnership don't forget Diego Carlos as well who can play there and then Matson will be on the left-hand side but there are currently three left-backs of high quality in the Aston Villa ranks with Luca Dean and Alex Moreno who can play there as well Leon Bailey, Anana, Tielemans and McGinn will likely be the midfield four with Rodgers playing as this sort of floating midfielder or attacking midfielder behind Oli Watkins I would expect this 4-4-1-1 formation to be deployed by Unai Emery on multiple occasions, but he can switch it up to a back three at times and also to a 4-2-3-1 formation, depending on the opposition. Arsenal at home in gimmick two doesn't look great, but Aston Villa have great fixtures to start this season and they did get the better of the Gunners on both occasions last season. Let's see if they can do that again at Villa Park in game week two. But as for set piece takers, Watkins could be on penalties, but I think it will be Tielemans who will usurp him for that duty. As for direct free kicks, McGinn, Luca Dean when he's on the pitch and Bailey will be the top three. And as for corners and indirect free kicks, I think Dean, McGinn, Bailey and Tielemans will be the top four. In terms of the order, that's quite difficult to judge, but I think McGinn could be the top one in that regard as well. As for their preseason results, they beat Warsaw 3-0 and also Spartak Tanava as well by the same scoreline. But then they lost 4-1 to Columbus, 2-0 to Leipzig, 1-0 to Club America and 2-0 to Borussia Dortmund. There was a 3-2 win of Athletic Bilbao in between, but Aston Villa still have a lot more to offer and we haven't seen the best of them in the recent preseason games. Bournemouth have lost their star striker in Solanke to Tottenham Hotspur in a mega £65 million deal. He scored 19 times for the Cherries last season and will take a lot to replace those goals. But I think Semenya can do a good job up front. He can also play as a right winger. And Jebison is a £4.5 million forward who could get a lot of game time this season. He might even start in game week one with Kloivert dropping to the bench and Semenyo playing on the right-hand side. But Neto should be in goal with a defensive four of Smith, Zabani, Sanesi and Kerkes. Christie and Scott should be the two holding midfielders with Kloivert, Tavernier, Sinistera and Semenya up front. But it could be a bit of a reshuffle here with one of these three attacking midfielders benched and I think it will be Kloivert dropping down there with Jebison up front and Semenya on the right-hand side. If you are a Cherries fan or watch Bournemouth regularly, be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. The same goes for every other team covered in today's video. Bournemouth's opening fixtures are okay, I guess. I think Chelsea at home could be quite good for the attackers. Semi Nottingham Forest away. But Newcastle and Everton aren't too really appealing, in my opinion. And it's going to be quite tough, I think. Bournemouth don't have a great fixture run on paper, not at least for a prolonged period, as other teams do. But Bournemouth have some good FPL options here. I think Senesi is a very underrated defender who has a lot of goal potential for his position. You've also got Semenyo, who for me is the standout pick. Jefferson at 4.5 million could be a steal. So those two will pique my interest if they get consistent starts. And Kloivert took the last penalty that Bournemouth had in a 3-2 win over Girona. Their preseason results have been fairly decent, actually. They drew to Wrexham 1-1. They also drew to Arsenal 1-1 in normal time and lost on penalties. And they beat Raya Vallecano 1-0 and Girona 3-2, where Jefferson scored a late winner. Sinistera also scored in that game. The opening fixtures aren't particularly great, but Nottingham Forest away is still quite good for the attackers and maybe even Chelsea if they don't get their act together. As for set-piece takers for Bournemouth, it should be one of Semenyo, Kloivert or Tavernier for the penalty duties. And if you do have an informed opinion about that, be sure to let me know. As for direct free kicks, Billing, Tavernier and Scott. And then with corners and indirect free kicks, courtesy of All About FPL, Cook, Tavernier, Christie and Scott is probably the order that I'd rank them but it's still very difficult and some of these are open to interpretation and it depends on who actually gets the start and who's on the pitch at the time that these set pieces are taken. Many FPL managers won't be looking at Brentford assets because they face Liverpool and Man City away in the opening four game weeks, but Crystal Palace and Southampton are fairly decent fixtures on paper, particularly in game week three, and Brentford are still worth investing in long term. Flecking and goal at 4.5 million is a solid choice, and the back four 
all consist of four point family and options at the moment. We've also got Rico Henry, who could come into the starting 11 later in the season, and Ben Mee. But Ruslev, Collins, Pinnock, and Adja should be the main four, with a midfield free of Norgard, Janelt, and Jensen. And the attacking free could be in Bumo. Wisser and Tony. Bashada has impressed in pre-season and we could see Tony on the bench for now and he comes on as a substitute and wins that starting berth later in the campaign. And if that's the case, we would see Wisser as the main striker only at 6 million in price tag with Sharda and Mbumo on the wings and Mbumo would be the main penalty taker when Ivan Tony isn't on the pitch. But of course, Ivan Tony for me is an expert penalty taker. Sometimes he does these no-look ones and still beats the keeper. Wisser should be further in command for penalties as well. As for direct free kicks, Tony, Jensen and Mbumo when they're on the pitch of course and as for corners and indirect free kicks, I think Jensen and Mbumo would be the main ones there as well. As for the preseason results, they beat Wimbledon 5-2 and Wissa scored a penalty in that game but Mbumo and Ivan Tony won on the pitch. They drew 1-1 to Benfica where Mbumo scored. They lost 3-1 to Amadora but they drew 1-1 to Watford and they drew 4-4 to Wolfsburg, where Mbumo, Wissa, Jensen and Schada all scored. So I think Brentford have quite a few underrated assets in FPL this season. The front three are certainly the most appealing. And Wissa looks like a very good option at 6 million up front. With Mbumo as a midfielder being 7 million, he will be my favourite pick from Brentford. Brighton are still quite tough to predict in terms of their starting 11, despite Roberto De Zerbi leaving the club and a new manager at the helm, whose preferred formation is 3-4-3. And I think Brighton will start the season with this formation, but they can sometimes switch in-game to a 4-2-3-1 and multiple different formations depending on the opposition and the game state. But Jason Steele will be in goal, as Verbruggen is injured at the moment and he should miss the first few game weeks of the season. But the back three should be Veltman, Lewis Dunk and Van Heck with a midfield four or two wing back technically of Minta and Barco and then Waifa and also Beleba as the two central midfielders with Matoma, Welbeck and Joel Pedro up front. I think this could be the starting 11 in Gemic 1 against Everton away but we will see changes depending on the opposition and Brighton have quite a lot of good players in their ranks even for example in CISA once he returns from his Olympic and Copa America duty and several others who could make their way into the team like James Milner but I think Brighton are still worth investing in with Barco at 4 million for the first four Gemics of the season, Joel Pedro as a 5.5 family and enabler and Danny Welbeck has been on fire in pre-season and let's not forget about Matoma who was a template pick at this time last year now he's a mega differential and Mint is another one who's been performing excellently in pre-season where they lost 2-1 to Basenstoke but they beat Kashima 5-1 also Tokyo Verdi 4-2 they beat QPR 1-0 and Villarreal by four goals to nil Joao Pedro Welbeck who scored a brace, by the way, and Minta all scored the goals. So I think they'd be very enticing options up front. As for the set-piece takers, Joao Pedra and Welbeck would be the top two for me. Then Lewis Dunk and Welbeck for direct free kicks. And finally, I think Barco could be the main corner kick taker whilst he's on the pitch. Then Estupinian would take his place for those set-piece duties and indirect free kicks as well. It's worth mentioning that Pascal Gross is a massive loss to Brighton. He has joined Borussia Dortmund. Otherwise, he would have been a top recommendation on this channel. But even still, Brighton always find a way to identify these gems and they become good FPL assets over the course of the season. Chelsea are also quite difficult to predict due to the sheer number of players they have at the disposal but Robert Sanchez should start in goal you also got Jorgensen and six other goalkeepers who are competing with Robert Sanchez but I still think the Spaniard will be the number one for now at least Malo Gusto, Colwell, Badiashile and Kukrilla is fairly locked in I think the centre-backs is the only position I've got a major problem in here Malo Gusto will be the right back due to Reese James's suspension and also he has picked up another injury according to The Athletic and as for the two holding midfielders I think it will be Enzo Fernandez and Lavia with Caicedo being on the bench Bench, but that could also change over the next couple of weeks. Cole Palmer should start right wing in my opinion despite only playing a handful of minutes against Inter Milan and apart from that he hasn't featured for Chelsea at all in pre-season as he came back late from the Euro tournament. Nkuku will start probably as the attacking midfielder but he can play up front and also as an inside forward on the left or right but I think Sterling will play against his former club in Manchester City but Pedro Neto has just signed for Chelsea and I think in a couple of weeks time he'll be the main left winger for the Blues and Jackson had an injury from one or two weeks ago but he was on the bench against Inter Milan and I think he'll start in game week one but if not it'll be in Cuckoo up front and Dewsbury Hall as the attacking midfielder and then multiple changes will be made 
over the course of the season. Man City at home looks poor in game week one, but Chelsea have great fixtures until game week eight. And that's why Palmer in Cuckoo, possibly even Robert Sanchez, remain enticing options from the get-go. Now, Chelsea in pre-season have been woeful. They drew 2-2 to Wrexham. They lost 4-1 to Celtic. Beat Club America 3-0, but they lost 4-2 to Man City. 2-1 to Real Madrid and drew 1-1 to Inter Milan. The main star has been in Cuckoo, who took a penalty in Cole Palmer's absence. He is my top pick in the Chelsea ranks, but Palmer, of course, will be right up there amongst the highest scoring players in FPL once again. I wouldn't recommend any defender at the moment. Robert Sanchez in goal, possibly, but you've got seven other goalkeepers competing for that spot, and I just don't really trust Chelsea from a defensive perspective just yet. The fixtures are good, as I just mentioned, and in terms of set-piece takers, there are no doubts about the penalties. Palmer is first, in Cuckoo second, and Enzo Fernandez could be third in line. As for direct free kicks, Palmer, Enzo, and Sterling. As for corners and indirect free kicks, Chilwell when he's on the pitch, Enzo and Palmer will be the top three in terms of those set piece takers as well. Despite losing Michael Elise to Bayern Munich, I still think Crystal Palace look quite strong going into game week one. Dean Henderson should be in goal with a back three of Richards, Joachim Anderson and Mark Gay, who has been heavily linked to Newcastle and let's see if he ends up moving there. But if he stays at Crystal Palace, he'll start week in, week out, just like he did at the Euros where he had a great tournament for England. The two wing backs should be Munoz and Mitchell, who has been very impressive recently. He scored in a recent friendly and also got an assist in the last two matches in particular. Wharton and Hughes should be the two midfielders, but we could see Cheek Decore instead of Hughes there. As for the front three, it'll be Kamada, Eze and Edouard for now, but once Mateta is back with Crystal Palace, he'll be the main starting striker for the Eagles. They've got some good opening fixtures against Brentford, West Ham and Leicester. Even Chelsea away isn't too shabby for the attackers at least. And as for set-piece takers, for Crystal Palace it should be Eze and Mateta for penalties, and the same goes for direct free kicks. As for corners and indirect free kicks, I think it'll be Eze, Ayu and Wharton in that order. Don't let the opening four games deceive you. Everton are top of the fixture difficulty rating until gaming 14, which is in December. And that's why Pickford remains one of the best goalkeepers in FPL from gaming one. He's priced at 5 million and he's still worth all of that money. The back four should be Coleman, Tarkovsky, O'Brien, who's just been signed from Lyon, and Mikalenko. The midfield four should be Harrison, Idrissa Garnagay, and also the former Aston Villa player in the heart of the midfield, and McNeil on the left-hand side. The core is operating as a floating striker just behind Calvert-Lewin, who is on penalties, and I think Calvert-Lewin could offer great value. He did very well a couple of years back, back in 2020, 2021, and we could see more of that instead of the very big disappointments from the last campaign. As for their preseason form though, Everton have been quite poor. They drew 3-3 to Sligo Rovers. They lost 2-1 to Salford, lost 3-0 to Coventry, but they did beat Preston North End 3-0 and drew 1-1 to Roma. So they have improved in the last two games, but still they have been quite shaky overall. And then when we look at the set piece takers, Cavalier will be on penalties. McNeil, Garner and Young will take direct free kicks when they're on the pitch. And as for corners and indirect free kicks, it should be McNeil, Garner and Ashley Young. Things can change very quickly, like if Branthwaite stays at Everton, you should see him displace O'Brien once again. But with Fulham, I see quite a nailed-on starting eleven for now, with Leno in goal, Castagna, Diop, Bassi and Robinson, a midfield pivot of Lukic and Andres Pereira, Adama Traore and Iwobi as the two wingers, with Smith Rowe, the new signing, just behind Rodrigo Meniz, and Fulham have some very enticing fixtures to kickstart this season. I could see them starting off very well, actually, and maybe even entering the top half half for quite a long time. Now in pre-season they've been quite decent, they beat Benfica 1-0, lost 2-1 to Sevilla but also beat Hoffenheim by two goals to nil and Smithrow has scored in the last two games while Robinson has got two assists in those three matches overall. Those are the two standout picks for me in the Fulham ranks. Leno is still a decent goalkeeper and Castagna is a nice differential at 4.5 million. Manis at 6 million is also worth investing. I'm not too interested in Adama Traore or Iwobi to be quite honest with you, but Andres Pereira at 5.5 million is still on most set pieces and is a very underrated option in FPL. When we look at set piece takers, Pereira and Manis should be the main penalty takers and I think Manis could edge it but let's wait and see and of course Fulham fans can correct me if I'm wrong about that. Harry Wilson is the best free kick taker at the club so when he's on the pitch he will definitely take them and Dres Pereira and Smith Rowe would be next in line for those duties and then corners and indirect free kicks I think will be Andres Pereira, Harry Wilson 
and Emil Smith row there as well. Newly promoted clubs can be an enigma and very difficult to predict, but I personally believe this starting eleven is quite nailed on. My biggest issue would be at left centre back. Burgess might not even start in the end, but I personally think Murich will be the number one goalkeeper. He was signed from Burnley and he was incredible for the Clarets last season, getting so many bonus points and saves overall. Ben Johnson, who just signed from West Ham at right back, offers a good option at four million. The same goes for Wolfenden, Burgess, and Davis, who definitely is the standout in terms of attacking potential. He he got 18 assists in the championship last season. Then Morsi and Taylor could be the two holding midfielders with Hutchinson, Harness, Chaplin and Delap as the front four. The opening two fixtures are terrible against Liverpool at home and Manchester City away, but it does get easier afterwards, at least on paper. And Ipswich Town have been quite decent in pre-season, keeping multiple clean sheets. In fact, they've kept three out of the last four matches. Only one defeat there against Fortuna Dusseldorf. They beat the others like Shakhtar Donetsk, Hoffenheim and Nice. So that's very impressive, actually. And when we look at set-piece takers, I think the lap will be the main penalty taker with Hurst in second. And then direct free kicks will be interesting, but Chaplin and Hutchinson seem like the top two options with Leif Davis taking indirect free kicks and corners. Leicester City are back in the Premier League with some pretty difficult fixtures on paper, facing Tottenham, Fulham, Aston Villa and Crystal Palace in the opening four, but it does get better afterwards. And I think from game week five and beyond, it's worth investing in some of these assets. And Manson comes in at 4.5 million, so none of this Iverson or Ward crap that we saw from a couple of years ago. As for Ricardo Pereira, he's a 4.5 million defender now. A couple of years ago, he used to be 5.5 to 6 million in this game. Vestergaard and Wildfass offer two solid options options at 4 million they could be ideal for your fifth defender slot and then Justin who actually had a very good run before his long-term injury a couple of years ago he's another one to consider at 4.5 million Harry Winks the Cordova Reed and Ndidi should be the main three midfielders but Leicester could also play a 4-2-3-1 with Winks and Ndidi as the two holding midfielders and the Cordova Reed joining Mavadivi and Fatawu as the attacking midfielders or the wingers for example they can also alternate between the those three. Jimmy Vardy will be up front for now, but I'm not sure if he'll start week in, week out until Gemic 38, but he still scored a handful of goals in the championship last season with 18. He won two penalties and he's always a threat to the opposition. Now, Leicester have been a bit mixed bag in their preseason. They beat Virial 2-1 and also Shrewsbury by the same scoreline, but they lost 1-0 to Palermo and also the same score to Augsburg, which isn't ideal. But things get interesting with set pieces. Vardy will be the number one penalty taker with Daka and Mavadidi in the top three. And then Mavadidi and Winks will be the top two free kick takers. And finally, corners and indirect free kicks can't be ignored. Mavadidi and Fatawu will be the top two for those set pieces. Liverpool have looked very sharp in pre-season. Only one draw, which came against Las Palmas. They played two friendlies in a day with two completely different sets of players. But in the other games, they beat Betis, Arsenal, Manchester United and Sevilla, scoring a lot of goals in the process. And I think this will be the starting eleven, with the only doubt being Robertson or Simicast potentially. Robertson will be the main left-back throughout this season. But to kick things off, we could see Simicast, who has played more minutes in pre-season. And also in the midfield, you could argue Gravenberg will play as the holding midfielder, maybe even Endo, with McAllister playing further forward. But I personally believe Alisson will be in goal with Trent, who got an assist in that 4-1 win against Sevilla, being on the right-hand side. Kwanzaa being the main centre-back partner for Van Dijk, as things stand. And then Robertson on the left-hand side. McAllister, Shabosla and Elliot would be a very impressive midfield three. And Shabosla and Elliot in particular have been on fire in the recent friendlies. Salah, Diaz and Jota also makes for a very formidable front three. And Darwin Nunez could displace Jota as the season progresses. But for now, I think Jota will start in game week one and Liverpool are top of the fixture difficulty rating for the first eight game weeks of the season and then once again set pieces very very important Salah, Shabosla and McAllister will be the top three for penalty takers and I personally believe McAllister is the best of the three but will he take those penalties I'm not so sure about that and then with free kicks it will be Trent, Shabosla and McAllister and finally corners and indirect free kicks Shabosla, Trent and Robertson will also be right up there with those duties. Manchester City have lost most of the games in pre-season, but they won the most important one against Man United in the Community Shield final. They were 1-0 down, scored a late equaliser through Bernardo Silva, and they also made a comeback 
on penalties. Edison should be the number one goalkeeper over Ortega, despite being heavily linked with a move to Saudi Arabia. That has fallen through. Rico Lewis will be the main right back for now, but that could change with Cal Walker also returning from his international duties with England. Ruben Diaz and Akanji will be the main centre-back partnership for now, but Nathan Ake is yet another option. And Gavardio, a natural centre-back, will play as the main left-sided player for Manchester City there in the defence. Kovacic, De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva could be the midfield three, but Man City sometimes change formations very drastically. They can play a 4-2-3-1, a 4-3-3, and in pre-season, they've played a lot of games with a back three, so we could expect to see that more often this season. But Oscar Bob will be the main right winger for now, Grealish on the left, and Erling Haaland up front. There's also Doku who could get some minutes, to be fair, but I personally think Foden won't start against Chelsea because he hasn't featured whatsoever in pre-season, which is a big shame, but he's still someone to look at in Gameweek 2 or 3. I just don't think he'll get the nod in Gameweek 1, and Oscar Bob has been incredible in pre-season with two goals and four assists, including in the Community Shield final to set up that Bernardo Silva header. So that should be the starting eleven for Manchester City, and then set pieces is still very important. Haaland and KDB should be the main penalty takers. And then with free kicks, De Bruyne would be the top one there. And then maybe Bernardo Silva will be second or third in command. As for corners and indirect free kicks, De Bruyne and Foden should also be right up there. And I personally think De Bruyne could be a great short to medium term option, but I don't trust him to stay fit. I have several doubts about the starting eleven with Manchester United, but Anana will be in goal at 5 million, and the back four of Dallo, Maguire, Evans, and Lissandro Martinez is likely if Luke Shaw doesn't return from injury. Otherwise, we'll see Luke Shaw on the left-hand side and Lissandro slot back into centre-back. And Euro is out for three months. And once he's available, we will see that centre-back partnership of Lissandro Martinez and Euro. So expect a lot of changes to this Man United lineup over the next couple of weeks. But Casemiro and Menu will be the two holding midfielders, that's for sure. And a front four of Diallo, Fernandez, Garnacho and Rashford is possible. But Mason Mount has started a lot in pre-season. And we could see him as the attacking midfielder with Bruno Fernandes playing as the false nine, which we saw against... Man City in that Community Shield final. The opening fixtures are quite good for Man United, but they're missing a lot of key players, and Xerxes hasn't featured whatsoever in pre-season, which is quite baffling, but we'll probably see him get some minutes against Fulham and Brighton off the bench, but who knows what's in store for Man United fans this season. Now, United have performed well in recent friendlies, but the results have been very mixed bag. They lost 1-0 to Rosenberg, 2-1 to Arsenal, 3-0 to Liverpool, and of course to Man City in the final. They had a few victories in there, like a 2-0 win over Rangers and a 3-2 victory over Real Betis, but it just hasn't really been good enough from Man United. They have had a lot of injury problems already, which is very unfortunate. Rasmus Hoyland and Euro got injured against Arsenal, but the opening fixtures are good. And when we look at set pieces, Bruno Fernandes is the main one for penalties, direct free kicks, and also corners and indirect free kicks. But when we look at Rashford, he would be second in command for penalties, and also the direct free kick taking. But of course, if you've got any other ideas or if you think other players will come into the fray, maybe Xerxes over the course of the campaign or Mason Mount, that could also be worth considering as well. I completely agree with Draft Hound in terms of Newcastle starting 11. Nick Pope in goal at 5 million could offer great value and he's actually very highly rated in my best goalkeepers video and podcast. Trippier right back is my suggestion and he got some minutes in their recent friendly but Liveramento is still possibly going to get the nod in game week one. That is a possibility but I think Trippier and Lewis Hall will be the main fullbacks throughout the season with Cher and Byrne at centre-back for now and once Botman comes back he will displace Dan Byrne and let's see if Newcastle sign a centre-back like Mark Gay as well. The midfield three is quite locked in with Bruno Guimaraes, Longstaff and Joe Linton who is crucial to Newcastle and a front three of Jacob Murphy who's performed very well in pre-season, Anthony Gordon and Isak up front and expect Harvey Barnes to get plenty of opportunities this season and he might even break into the starting 11 over Jacob Murphy but I don't think that'll be the case in Gameweek 1 at least and we look at the set piece taking as well. I think Isak, Wilson and Gordon will be the top three penalty takers and Trippier, Cher and Bruno Guimaraes will be the main direct free kick takers. And then Trippier, Bruno Guimaraes and Gordon would take indirect free kicks as well as corners. Nottingham Forest might not have the best long-term fixtures, but the opening three game mix look great against Bournemouth, Southampton and Wolves. Sells is a decent choice at 4.5 million, but he was in my place to avoid list because I think there are better options in the goalkeeper position, even at that price tag. Nico Williams is probably the most offensive option they've got 
in the defensive line. And you've also got Milenkovic and Murillo as the two centre-backs with Aina on the left-hand side. Sangare and Danilo should be the two holding midfielders with Alanga, Gibbs-White, Hudson-Odoi and Chris Wood up front. That front four is definitely nailed on and any single one of them would offer great value in your FPL teams. Hudson-Odoi is a quality player, but the underlying stats aren't particularly great. Alanga is explosive with some decent underlying stats, whilst Gibbs-White is very consistent and Chris Wood has a massive ceiling in certain games as we saw at St James's Park last season where he scored a hat-trick against his former club and Nottingham Forest have been decent in the recent friendlies with two clean sheets they drew nil nil to Villarreal they beat Olympiacos 4-3 where Chris Wood got a goal and an assist Elanga scored in that game and they've beaten the likes of Millwall and Chesterfield quite comfortably as well a 3-0 win in the first preseason game too so watch out for Nottingham Forest there might be a surprise package this season I actually had them as one of the relegation candidates but they have been impressive in the recent games. And as for penalties, I think Gibbs White will be the main one, with Chris Wood also right up there. And then Gibbs White and Nico Williams taking direct free kicks. And Gibbs White will be top for corners and indirect free kicks, with Nico Williams and Danilo in the top three. I believe Southampton will mainly play a 3-5-2 formation, but in certain matches it could be a 3-4-3, or they might even switch to a back four. But McCarthy will be in goal, as Bazanu is currently injured for the rest of the year, and hopefully he makes a speedy recovery. The back three should be Howard Bellis, Stevens, and Bednarik, all of whom are 4 million in price tag. And then the two wing backs should be Sugawara, who is a new signing, and also Charlie Taylor, to be fair, another new signing, who is even cheaper than the Japanese international. Now, you might be thinking, where is Kyle Walker-Peters? He has hasn't featured in preseason whatsoever and Sugawara should be the main right back for now and it's a very weird situation that's going on there and I don't think any Southampton fan really knows the ins and outs of that situation. The free centre midfielder should be Smallbone, Downs and Aribo and up front Armstrong and Burton Diaz offer tremendous value, particularly the Chilean slash English player in Burton Diaz. I think he could be a very enticing option out of position and he did very well for Sheffield United considering the fact they were relegated. He didn't get that many minutes, but he impressed with the little minutes he had and the few opportunities, but he could be a nice out of position player there and Armstrong is decent at 5.5 million. The opening fixtures are decent. Newcastle is obviously a bit of an avoid and Man United at home isn't the easiest, but Nottingham Forest in gaming two and Brentford away in gimmick three means the likes of Harwood Bellis even the other formerly defenders like Charlie Taylor and Burton Diaz will be enticing options for the Saints. If you are looking for a 5.5 million forward Armstrong is quite decent in general but he's on penalties which boosts his appeal quite significantly. As for Smallbone and Manning, they will take corners, indirect free kicks as well as direct free kicks which makes them decent from that perspective but I wouldn't recommend them in FPL. I have to say from the get-go, Solanke will be the starting striker for Spurs week in, week out. But in game week one, I think Kulevzewski could play as the false nine. We've seen that in recent preseason games and he's been on fire, scoring in multiple matches, including the recent one against Bayern Munich in that 3-2 loss. And he can also play on the right-hand side and as an attacking midfielder. But I think this will be the starting 11 for Spurs against Leicester away in game week one and then in game week two and beyond Solanke will be the main striker then what does that mean for Kulazeski, Madison or Johnson one of them will probably drop down to the bench and a doggy will be the main left back instead of Jed Spence that's really a game week one sort of thing just to make that very clear Vicari will be in goal at five million he's a decent choice for saves and maybe bonus points from time to time but I'd recommend Pedro Porro, Romero or Van de Ven if you want to cover Spurs defensively Jed Spence is really a game week one punt I wouldn't recommend him beyond that Basuma and Saul will be the two holding midfielders with Son, Madison, Johnson and Kulazewski as the front four. But let me know down in the comment section below, who do you think will drop down to the bench once Solanke gets into the starting eleven? which could be as soon as Gemic 1, by the way. As Ange Postacoglu said, he is ready. He's already featured for Bournemouth in pre-season. So that could also be maybe something wrong with this predicted lineup as well. Now with set pieces in Tottenham Hotspur, Solanke, Son and Madison will be the main penalty takers and something similar with direct free kicks with Madison, Son and Pedro Porro. And finally, corners and indirect free kicks, Madison, Porro and Kulazeski will be the top three for Tottenham Hotspur.
West Ham's new manager, Julian Lopetegui, likes to play a 4-3-3, and I think that'll be the case at West Ham, but they have so many centre-back options like Mavropanos, Agurd, Anto Dibo, who has been signed on loan, on top of Zuma and Kilman, that I think West Ham could switch to a back three more often than not. But for game week one, I think they'll go for this 4-3-3 with Ariola in goal, Soufal, Kilman, Zuma, and Emerson as the back four. Salchek, Ward-Prowse, and Paqueta completing the midfield with Bowen, Kudus and Fulkrug up front. Mikel Antonio will be the backup striker for me and Ariola will be the starting goalkeeper so long as he stays at the club. So Fabianski will be on the bench for now. The opening fixtures are terrible, especially Man City in game week three and even Aston Villa at home isn't great to kickstart this campaign. But West Ham have plenty of good options in FPL, particularly in the midfield. James Ward Prowse, Bowen and Fulkrug will be the main penalty takers with Ward Prowse and Bowen on free kicks. And as for corners and the indirect free kicks here and there, Ward Prowse and Bowen will also be on those duties at the same time. The 20th and final team is Wolves, who had an awful end to last season. And despite some recent preseason games being quite good for them in terms of performances, they beat Leipzig 3 0, for example, they've still been quite shaky and inconsistent in terms of their results. But Jose Sarr remains a good four point family and goalkeeper to consider. Historically, he's great in Fantasy Premier League, but Wolves didn't keep enough clean sheets last season, and Gary O'Neill has actually transformed them offensively, but they have been worse from a defensive perspective. Their back three will likely be Mosquera, a formerly in defender, Dawson and Totti Gomez, with Doughty, Joao Gomez, Lamina, Traore and Aitnuri forming part of the back five. And Wolves do change formation quite often, actually. It could be a 4-2-3-1, a 4-4-1-1, a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2. But Pedro Neto has left the club, which could actually shift them towards a 3-5-2 or a 4-4-2 at times. But I think it will be Larson and Huang Hee-chan in game week one, as Cunha is injured and he will likely miss the game against Arsenal at the Emirates. But he should be back very soon the injury isn't serious so expect Cunha to start in game week two or three he scored a hat-trick against Chelsea in their last meeting and Cunha is an underrated option at 6.5 million the main issue with him is the injury record throughout his time at Wolves but he is the main penalty taker with Sarabia and Huang in the top three as for free kicks, it will be Sarabia taking the majority of them. The same goes for corners and the indirect free kicks, which is still an asset for any FPL asset. And I think Sarabia, if he gets some minutes, will be a decent 5-point family midfielder. But to start things off, I think Wolves will go quite defensive and this 3-5-2 is very likely. That concludes the Predicted Lineups video and podcast for all 20 Premier League teams where I also covered the set piece takers and what could change from game week one and beyond. So Cunha is injured for the opening game, but he will get back into the Wolves lineup afterwards. The same goes for Sinchenko starting in game week one and then you'll see Calafuri and Timber start a left back. Phil Foden, who could be a mega miss for Manchester City in that clash with Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. So a lot will change. But if you want to see maybe some more regular predicted lineups, be sure to let me know down the comment section below. Burton Diaz is a mega differential we haven't discussed in previous videos on podcasts so much, but he deserves the mention. A five-point family and price tag and such low ownership at 0.6%. He got six goals and one assist in just 14 starts, averaging 4.4 points per match and 62 FPL points which is very impressive and I could see the likes of Burton Diaz and Armstrong delivering healthy returns against Nottingham Forest and Brentford. Thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it or found it useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to the 300 likes and let's keep on pushing towards new goals like 35 subscribers. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram Dylan RCM and check all the other links in the description below for my Patreon and the championships, the Discord server, FPL League, Draft Town, as well as Spotify. Leave a five-star review on my podcast. It goes a long way to support my channel. I wish you all the best of luck for Game Week 1 and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.